God now for our Bible message, Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9, if you'll turn with me. Matthew chapter 9, we'll start reading in verse number 35, Matthew 9, 35. The Bible says, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep, having no shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into his harvest. Let's pray together. May we? Father, we thank thee for this uh, day that we've had, a wonderful week. Father, we thank you that you are the great shepherd. We know that uh, you've sought us. You, you're seeking lost sinners even now. And Father, we pray that you'll continue to do your work through us, through this church. May we do the work of seeking after, after lost sinners as well. Help us to be about your business. Father, I pray for each and every person that's here. I pray that they can know the love of having a shepherd. I pray that they can uh, know the, the joy of being part of your flock, of being part of your family. And Father, I pray that you'll bless each, each uh, family that's represented here. Help them... Uh, as families to worship you together, to, to teach one another your word. Father, I pray for this church that you'll help us to continue to move forward in our community, in our Jerusalem, and the area that you've put that you've planted us in. Help us to bear fruit. Father, I pray for uh, for this time, this this time together tonight, that it will be a sweet time of fellowship looking into your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, all of us know that uh, what England needs, and what we need is uh, for a revival to happen, people to come back to the Lord, and Christians to be uh, on fire again for doing God's business. That's what a revival is. It's Christ the Christians coming back and, uh, and doing what Christians are supposed to do. That's what revival is. It's being woken up and doing those things. But here, the Lord Jesus Christ, He realizes that for something to happen, uh, there has to be prayer. God has to move. God has to do the work. And he says, pray the Lord of the harvest that he would thrust some laborers into the harvest, that he that a work would be done. And uh, that's what we need. The Lord Jesus Christ here shows his, his great heart, the great heart of God for people. And uh, he shows here that he has a heart for these individual people. Just a little bit of background. We've already said that uh, uh, I, I mentioned just very briefly last Sunday. I read this verse just as a as part of the announcements, and I mentioned that Jesus Christ, uh, as he was traveling through Galilee, he was among people that he knew. People, of course, Jesus knew the hearts of of every man, but these are people who knew him as well. People that he lived around in Galilee, his hometown, and so as he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom among these people as he was healing all these diseases, as he was teaching from village to village, when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion when he saw these people. I was so such a blessed, and then, then he says pray, pray for these people and pray for laborers. I was so um, thankful to be able to uh, have Andrew and Salvador with us this past week and they had a real heart for what they were doing. And we were joking this morning that, 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 that Andrew, he taught the kids the song, uh, Do You Know a Christian? You're a Sermon in Shoes. And we said, Andrew, he lived it out. He, he, he goes from, from town to town, taking this message to individuals, bringing it to their level, and helping it to be clear, and making the gospel clear and plain to people, doesn't he? And so that's what we need to be. And Christians need to be living it out, teaching, just like Jesus does here, teaching, preaching, living and giving, walking and talking. They, that's what we need to do. We need to take the gospel in that way to people. And Andrew even, he wore out a hole in his shoes because he, uh, he was uh, 
uh, working so hard this, this past week. But, but it was so good to see their heart, is what I was going to say. Their heart for people. And, and as they, we've got to enjoy fellowship with them in our home. And uh, it was good to hear them praying at night. We were able to pray together each night and praying for each, each of the children and each of the teenagers by name that we were able to minister to this week. And uh, that's the kind of heart that God wants us to have. That's the kind of heart that Jesus had for these people. <coughs> he, he was moved with compassion. But why? why? Why was He moved with compassion on them? It says, because they fainted and were scattered. They were scattered at, abroad as sheep having no shepherd. You, you see, sheep, sheep are one of the most... Uh, stupid animals in the world. They, uh, if, if that's the right word for it, they. Uh, I've heard, uh, read a book. The, uh, a, a shepherd looks at Psalm 23. There's a book called A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23. And he goes through Psalm 23 and he looks at how uh, the Bible compares us to sheep. And he, as a shepherd, he said that's the worst thing that that uh, that I could be compared to because I know how dumb sheep are. And he said that uh, sheep. Uh, sheep are so unintelligent, they're so dumb and they get so dirty, they're so timid and defenseless and helpless, and they're always getting lost and hurt and snake bitten. And he said they literally do not know enough to even come in out of the rain. He, he looked, said he looked back on his shepherding days with a great deal of disgust. He said sheep are miserable creatures and it's, you need a, it's hard to find patience when you're working with sheep. But aren't you glad that even when we are miserable and, and uh, we're wandering around, the Bible says that, that uh, God loves us. God is our shepherd. What wonderful love and patience God has for us. And it takes hard work, doesn't it, to do these types of things with children, uh, with teenagers. But, uh, but the Lord Jesus Christ, He did so much work for us. He came to the cross. He came. He was the great shepherd. He came seeking after that one sheep that was lost. And He loves us. You know, the, uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, I am one of those shepherds. The shepherd who wrote that book said, that hurt my feelings. He said, if I'm really honest with myself, I know it's true though. I know that I lack wisdom and strength. I'm inclined to be self-destructive. I know my own tendencies towards self-indulgent individualism. Going my own way and doing my own thing. That's me. I'm a sheep. And if Jesus Christ is to be my shepherd, I have to admit that I need a shepherd. It is difficult, but that is where we must start. We need a shepherd. People need a shepherd. And uh, people are, it says here, they were, <coughs> they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. There's people there just scattered abroad. The Bible says, all we, saw, uh, in, uh, in um, Isaiah 53, the Bible says, all we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. All we. The, uh, this shepherd, he says that it's not just some of the sheep that wander away. It's all of them. <laughs> Every single one of them wanders away if there's no shepherd there. Every single one of them will do it. They'll get lost. And you know what? All we, like sheep, have gone astray. You know, every single person, we can't assume that any person will just naturally come to the Lord on their own. The Holy Spirit has to work in their hearts. And the Gospel has to be preached to them. And, and the Word of God has to be taught to them. And we can't assume that just because they've come to an event that they're automatically going to become part of the flock of God. You know, they're like Holy Bible Club. They need to become part of the family of God. They need to be brought in. It takes hard work. And if we just leave them after Holy Bible Club's over, they will go astray. They'll just wander away. It happens. Every All we like sheep have gone astray. And so it takes constant work, a, sh a shepherding work. And that's what, God, that's what God does for us. He's our shepherd. And yet, as a church, a, a, as a pastor, the Bible says that a pastors are also called shepherds. Throughout the Old Testament, the, the religious leaders were called shepherds. And in the New Testament, Paul uses the same word again as, uh, for people, shepherds. Everywhere from Genesis to Revelation, we see that theme going through the Bible of the shepherding, and uh, it's something we don't, uh, it's an analogy we don't see very often. Uh, well, actually, I guess we do here in England, there's quite a few sheep, 
but uh, but we don't live we don't live it very often. But it's something that the Bible says is true of all of us. We need a shepherd. We need a shepherd first of all because we're all prone to wander. Like that song, "Come Thou Found." It says, "Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love." And uh, we we have some snacks are actually ready to go in the back room and some. Some the crayons are on the table, so if you need those as well. But uh, we're all prone to wander. We need people to shepherd us. The Bible says that uh, uh, we all need a shepherd. These people they need a shepherd. Now, if there's if there's somebody out there who who is trying to raise their family on their own, a single mother, that person needs a shepherd. They need somebody to help them to find the Lord and to find the true shepherd and to guide them into the Word of God. If there's somebody out there who's a, a father who's trying to raise his family, he doesn't know which way to go, he needs a shepherd. Their college students need shepherds. Teenagers need, need a shepherd. Children need a shepherd. And Jesus said he had compassion on these people because they were a sheep having no shepherd. And uh, uh, as I said before, sheep are helpless. They're hopeless when they've wandered away from the sheepfold. They're helpless against the wolves. They're helpless against the elements. They're, they don't even know to walk in out of the rain. And you know what? We need somebody. To, people think that they're fine. They, I'm, sure sheep, I'm sure sheep don't realize they need a shepherd. Uh, they, they think they're perfectly fine wandering around the world and the wilderness. But they need a shepherd because there's so many dangers out there, aren't there? So many wolves. So many false teachers. So much evil doctrine. So many precipices that they could fall off of. And uh, and they all, every single one does. Like I said before, um, I quoted Isaiah 53, but Psalm 119, also verse 176 says, I have gone astray as a lost sheep. And so the fold from which we wander is the fold of God, the family of the, the, the fold of God. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, Adam and Eve, they left God's fold and they went out, and they were lost. But the Bible says in Luke chapter 15 that the Lord Jesus Christ came to us after we wandered away. Let's look at Luke. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15, verse 3. says, And He spoke this parable unto them. What man of you having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. You might think, well, we've got enough people. Well, what about that one that's still lost? And this, 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 this uh, parable convicts me. You know, if, if you were the only lost person, if you were the only person in the world, the Lord Jesus Christ still would have left heaven to come after you and seek after you. And so if there's one lost person out there, we should not quit doing the Father's business and seeking after that, that lost one as well. The Lord Jesus is the shepherd here in this parable in Luke 15. He's the seeking shepherd. He was the wounded shepherd. He, uh, he, he went until he find it, verse 4 says. And uh, you know what? Uh, he, he didn't give up. He, he kept going. Luke chapter 19, verse 10 says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. That was the... That was the goal. That was the um, the mission. That was the purpose of the Lord Jesus Christ coming to seek and to save that which was lost. That's God's business: seeking the lost. Jesus said when he was 12 years old, "I must be about my Father's business." What's God's business? It's I must be about my Father's business. He said, "I've come to seek and save that which was lost." So you can put those two verses together. You can say that God's business is to seek and to save that which is lost. And we're supposed to be about our Father's business as well seeking after these lost sheep and rejoicing when one comes back to the fold. You know, if, if, if one 
if one sheep comes back to the Lord, the Bible says that uh, <coughs> there's rejoicing in heaven. Joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. That one person. You know, it would be worth it all. I love that song. It would, um, uh, Just One More Soul. That's the name of the song. And, and uh, I'm not going to try to sing it anytime soon. I don't think it's pretty hard, but you can look it up. But it talks about uh, if just one more soul were to walk down the aisle, it would be worth every struggle, it would be worth every mile. It would be, uh, as then it says, so preachers go preach it, singers go sing, and do the job. Because it, it, it would be worth it all if just one more soul came to the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's true. We need to keep going. Keep going uh, until we find those sheep. Uh, there's a story about a general in the, in the early 1900s, uh, or, the, or I'm sorry, the late 1800s, General... Gibaldi, and he was coming home from from the battle, and they, it was all finished, and they were hot, they were going back through through the mountains of Italy, and they came across a poor shepherd, who had uh, who had lost uh, one of his sheep, and uh, he said, uh, "This these are prized sheep. These are these are the the most important sheep that I've ever raised, and and this particular sheep is very important." And so they didn't really have anything to do. All the soldiers were on the way home, so. The general said, okay, men, we've got plenty of men. Let's all work together, and, and we'll all find this shepherd's sheep for him. So they all went through the fields and the mountains, and they went searching uh, that all that afternoon and evening for this sheep. But uh, they never could find it. And so the next morning, uh, the, the general's secretary uh, realized that uh, it was time to, to march off, and the, the, the bugle sounded, and there was still no general. The general still had wasn't awake yet, so he went in to the general's tent, and the general was still in bed. What a what a, a strange sight that was. The general still being in bed at that time, and so he went over and and he uh, tapped the general on the shoulder, and the general woke up and he pulled back the blanket, and there was that lost sheep that they had been. So he had kept searching all night by himself. The general had until he had found that one lost sheep. And uh, he gave it back to the shepherd. You know, we, we need to realize the urgency of seeking after the lost. We all go astray. The second thing that, uh, the second reason we need a shepherd is because we can't find our way back again uh, by ourselves. We have turned everyone to his own way, Isaiah 53 says. We've turned to his own way. The Bible says in Proverbs, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. And so, so many people, they get lost. They can't find their own way back to God. The gospel needs to be preached to them. Somebody has to take the gospel message to them and tell it to them clearly. And, uh, uh, but people can't find their own way back. That's why it was such, such a terrible thing when <coughs> Jeremiah, Jeremiah started preaching to the shepherds. Look at Jeremiah, if you will, with me. Jeremiah said, these people cannot find their own way back. And the blame was put squarely on the shoulders of the shepherds of Israel. Jeremiah chapter 50. Look at verse 6. My people hath been lost sheep. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 6. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. So it was the shepherd's fault that the sheep had gone astray. The shepherds weren't doing their job, you see. And so these people had, had gone far, far away from where they were supposed to be. Jeremiah, uh, go backwards as well in Jeremiah, to Jeremiah chapter 9. Jeremiah chapter 9. Look at verse 1. Oh, that my head were waters, and mine eyes a fountain of tears, that I might weep day and night for the slain of the daughter of my people. Oh, that I... Oh, that I had a... Look at verse number 21, I'm sorry. For death is come up into our windows and has entered into our palaces to cut off the children from without and the young men from the streets. 
Here we see Jeremiah, he's weeping for his people. He's weeping for his people as the people are being scattered, as the people are being uh, slain, as Jerusalem is being is going to be destroyed. He says these people are like sheep. But uh, actually, chapter. look at the next chapter, chapter 10, verse 21 as well. It says, for the pastors, and the word pastor, of course, is the same as the word shepherd. The pastors are become brutish and have not sought the Lord. Therefore they shall uh, not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. These pastors had become brutish. They would become selfish. They had become, they were leading the sheep. They were driving the sheep. They were brutish. They were selfish. They were doing, they were not doing things God's way. They didn't seek the Lord about it, it says in this verse. And it says that they would not prosper, and their flocks would be scattered. Look at chapter 12 of Jeremiah. Chapter 12, verse 10. Chapter 12, verse 10 says, Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They have uh, made a pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it desolate, and being desolate and mourneth unto me, the whole land is made desolate, because no man layeth it to heart. He's saying here that the reason that the nation is being destroyed, the reason that the nation is being scattered, the reason Babylon, Babylon's coming in, it all lays on the shoulders of the pastors. The shepherds weren't doing their job. And so how important it is for us to do our job shepherding in the shepherding work. Chapter, uh, chapter number 23 of Jeremiah as well. He talks again about the, the shepherds. He's, he preaches a lot to these pastors and <coughs> shepherds, spiritual shepherds. Chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. Look at chapter 25. Uh, this is the last one we'll look at. Chapter 25 here in the book of Jeremiah, verse 34. Chapter 25, verse 34 says, Howl, ye shepherds, and cry, and wallow yourself in the ashes, ye principal of the flock. For the days of your slaughter and of your dispersions, that's the scattering, are accomplished, and ye shall fall like a pleasant vessel. And the shepherds shall have no way to flee, nor the principal of the flock to escape. A voice of the cry of the shepherds, and a howling of the principal of the flock shall be heard, for the Lord, for the Lord hath spoiled their pasture. And then uh, we already read chapter 50, verse 6. The people have been lost sheep. Their, their shepherds have caused them to go astray. So he puts the blame right on the shoulders of of these leaders, these these pastors, the pastors failed them. Uh, they failed them uh, uh, by from teaching biblical Christianity. You know, I, I was doing some statistics, uh, researching some statistics yesterday, and uh, I was reading about the Church of England and how um, two two churches close per week in England, and they were saying how terrible it is, and and uh, what can we do to fix this, and. And the people are, are leaving, and, and all these things. The children are leaving. The te there's no teenagers. There's, there's, it's all uh, older generation. But, you know, where does the blame for that lie? It lies with a lack of something. Why do, pe why do sheep wander away and, and get filled with all sorts of bad doctrine by the, by the wolves and sheep's clothing? Why do they fall for such things? And, and pastors get so mad. Why, why do these people so dumb and fall for such foolish things? Uh, doctrines is this. Well, it's because there's a void there. There's a vacuum there. Somebody wasn't putting the truth into those people, and so uh, so they they fall for all these uh, all these other things. It's the pastor's job to uh, to do those things. So if people are are don't know the truth, then uh, some it's because they haven't been taught it. You know, uh, we we need to take that blessed biblical Christianity 
that was given to us and we need to earnestly contend for it. We need to deliver it to every generation. The Bible says in Jude that our faith was, uh, it says earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. So it was delivered once, but it must be earnestly contended for in every generation or else uh, this precious treasure will not go to the next generation. And so we see in Jeremiah the same heart that uh, the Lord Jesus had. Jer Jesus was moved with compassion on these people because they were being scattered. They didn't have a shepherd. Well, Jeremiah also was moved. He said, my eyes are a fountain of tears because of this. And Je we know the Lord Jesus Christ also looked over Jerusalem and he wanted to gather them together as a hen does her chickens, but he said ye, but ye would not. But uh, he was moved. Jeremiah was moved. And in the book of Lamentations, it talks a lot about, about how he was moved. Uh, I wasn't going to look at this um, today, but I don't think it talks anything about shepherds in Jeremiah, but look, uh, in Lamentations. But look at Lamentations chapter 1, verse 5. He's crying over Jerusalem, and he says... He says, her adversaries are the chief, her enemies prosper, for the Lord hath afflicted her for the multitude of her transgressions. Her children are gone into captivity before the enemy. So in other words, Jeremiah is crying over the nation. He's saying, this nation is, is destroyed. What, is, what marks the fall of the nation? He says, the, the thing that marks the fall of the nation isn't the fact that the temple's been destroyed. The thing that marks the fall of the nation isn't the fact that the walls have been burnt down. The fall of the nation isn't that the, the financial system has collapsed. He says the fall of the nation is in the fact that the children are gone. Her children are gone. They've been scattered. And so we need to look at the children and see, see that they need a shepherd as well. And uh, we need to try to do our best to try to see each and every little lamb as uh, our responsibility to try to bring bring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I, was, I told you I was doing some statistics. They say that there are 14 million school-aged children in the United Kingdom. 14 million school-aged children. And, and then another 4 million uh, who are under the age of 4 who are going to be coming up as children soon. There are uh, 46,000 people in Peterborough right now who are under the age of 19. There are uh, 9,000 people living in Dogsthorpe, you know, people who, who we have the opportunity to share the gospel with. What, what a wonderful mission field. Uh, 14 million school-aged children who their hearts are tender and they await just somebody to go out with the, an evangelistic uh, thrust to take the gospel to them, to the ends of the earth. They say that only 6% of people in England attend any type of church regularly and most of those are not of the younger generation they say that Islam is the second fastest growing re uh, religious uh, confession in the UK after no religion that's the fastest growing but they say that uh, between 2001 and 2009 the Muslim population in England increased ten times faster than the non-Muslim population. They are, they're growing, and they say that the Muslims' adherents have the lowest average age of all the major religious groups. So, do uh, you know what that means? That means that they have the most children in their religion. They have the youngest age, uh, average age. And so, uh, it also says that they had, uh, they had a hundred there are 100,000 people in England who were not Muslim, but who have converted to, to Islam. They've converted to it. And of course, I've, I've uh, in Birmingham, I helped uh, in some of the RE assemblies at the public schools, and we saw little blonde-haired, blue-eyed girls with the Muslim headdress. You know, they, they, they're, they're 100,000 people who have converted over to that, who, who, who were not. And so they are growing. They, there's people out there, they have this void, and somebody's going to fill that void. Let's pray that it's filled with the truth, with the truth of God's word. So, what's happening to the children? They are, they are as sheep without a shepherd. They need a shepherd. Over in uh, the book of Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, 
chapter 34, it tells us again of this heart of God for, for people. If you'll try to find the book of Ezekiel with me, right before the book of Daniel and the major prophets there. This, this passage is the passage that, is, that Jesus is quoting in Matthew chapter 9, where it says they were a sheep, not having a shepherd. And in Ezekiel chapter 34, we see another glimpse of, of God's heart. He says in Ezekiel 34, verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, <coughs> prophesy against the shepherds of Israel, prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken. Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they become meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. He says they were, they were scattered because there was no shepherd. Verse 5. That's what Matthew 9 says. He was moved with compassion because they were as sheep scattered, having no shepherd. That was the heart of God. So what, what, do, you think, what do you think of the 14 million school-aged children in England? That what's, what is their greatest need? They, they, we might say, well, they need an education. Well, they do need an education. We might say, well, they need more activities uh, uh, after school or in the summertime. They need more friends. Well, yes, they need all those things, but the most important thing they need, they need to have a shepherd. They need someone who will love them, who will care about them, and uh, make a difference <coughs> in their life. All of us could stand up and talk about somebody who was in our life who... who took us under their wing, a man of God maybe who proclaimed the truth of the, God's word to you. And we need to do that for other people as well. Uh, you might say, well, I'm not a pastor, I'm not a shepherd. Well, uh, wherever God's put you, that's your place of service for God. And God puts people across your path. And that's the way God wants it to be done, through the local church. Teaching the Bible, preaching God's word, uh, people being built up in the word of God. And that's the way God's work always has been done and always will be done. You know, ever since the beginning. It's a simple principle, but teaching people God's word. Deuteronomy 6, fathers and mothers teaching their children diligently. Hard work. The work of a shepherd is hard work, but it's, uh, it's such rewarding work. You know, that's what uh, he says here in, in Ezekiel 34. He says, my weak... These people are weak. They need, they need help. These people are wounded. These people are wayward. And they need more than just <coughs> force and cruelty. They need a shepherd who can lead them with love. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, well, uh, a shepherd, you know, we, we need leaders. Well, it is true that uh, all, all shepherds should be leaders, but not all leaders are shepherds. Some people are... Are, some people drive, and that's why Jesus said to Peter, he said, do you love me? He said, yea, Lord. And he says, then feed my sheep. And three times he said that. Do you love me? Yes. Yea, Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. Feed my lambs. <coughs> three times he says it there. Feed, feed them. And then going on here in, in uh, Ezekiel 34, look at verse number 7. It says, therefore, ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely my flock became a prey, and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd. Neither did my shepherds search for the flock, for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. They're going astray. They're, they're listening to all these other voices that are out there in the world. 
because as I said, there's a vacuum that should have been filled by a shepherd. Verse 9 says, Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. I will require my flock at their hand. So I'm trying to get you to realize that we're responsible for this generation of sheep. If you're a Christian here, then uh, God, God's given you uh, an opportunity to, to help seek and to save that which was lost. And uh, we're responsible for not just the 9,000 people who might live in dog store, but for anybody that God brings across our path that we can share the gospel with them. And we need to have, we need to respond to this. We need to um, depend upon the Lord. We need to die to self. We need to say, Lord, may your agenda be, be my agenda. And God's agenda is seeking and save. God's business is to seek and save that which is lost. You know, if you have a, your own agenda, maybe you can, uh, you can let the Lord, you can give it to the Lord. And if He gives it back and gives His stamp of approval, that's great. But if He changes them, then they must have needed changing. Let the Lord help us to, to go out of our way to seek the lost. And uh, what a wonderful... Uh, opportunity that we have, uh, what a wonderful mission field we have. The Lord Jesus Christ has given us a great mission field. He says the fields are white already to harvest. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth the laborers into that harvest. A wonderful mission field. Let's just pray that uh, God will send forth those laborers. Let's pray. God can work. God can do the work. He's the, he's the one true great shepherd. Let's point people to Him uh, who are lost in this world. Uh, I remember hearing a story. This goes along with this morning's message a little bit as well. But, but uh, there was a story of a mother who, whose son had, had gone off. He was lost uh, spiritually. And, uh, and he had gone off. He had left home. He was like the prodigal son. He was like that lost sheep. And uh, he, he was too ashamed to ever go back home. He, he had... He had uh, left, and he had said some foolish things, and uh, and uh, his, his, he was afraid to go back to see his mother and his father again. And so one day he saw a relative, and he said, I'm, I would go back home. Uh, he became a Christian, actually. He became a Christian, and uh, his, the man who, his family member who led him to the Lord, he said, you need to go back home and, and tell mo your mother and father. He said, I can't go back home. I'm too ashamed of what I did, of what I said. And he said, uh, "I'll tell you what. Uh, I'll go and I'll go and talk to your mom and dad, and I'll tell them you're on your way. And uh, and I'm sure they'll be they'll be happy to see you." He said, "I don't know. How about uh, you give me a sign? If uh, if uh, if I'll, I'll ride I'll ride the bus past the house and uh, tell mom uh, if if, mo if if mom and dad if they're willing to see me again, take a white sh a white cloth and tie it around one of the branches on the tree." And then I'll know that mom and dad are, are ready to, uh, to see me again. He said, okay, I'll do it. And so the man uh, went past the, the house on the bus. But when he passed the house, there wasn't just one thing tied around the branch, but the entire tree was covered with white cloths on every branch. You know, they were saying, come home. Come on home to the Lord. He, he wants to welcome lost sheep back to the fold. And uh, anybody, he wants them to come back to him. Let's go out and find those lost sheep and point them back to the Savior. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the Lord Jesus Christ, our wonderful shepherd who, who came to seek after us. Uh, he was Galgotha's ram, crucified there, as we sung about earlier. Father, we pray that we can uh, come to him. Uh, if we're not part of your fold, if there's anyone here who's not a Christian, I pray that they will realize that you're standing there with open arms. You're actually seeking after them. Father, I pray that they'll come to you and put their faith in you. Father, I pray for, for us who have come to you, and we know you as our, as our shepherd. I pray that you'll help us to, to seek after the lost as well. Help us to have your heart of compassion for lost souls. It's in Jesus' name we pray.